not to get too much into how you source talent in football, etc. I mean, you're La Liga. I'm not talking to a football club and trying to get into their secrets and all this. But for parents, when should they focus on their kids to play football and build their talent? I, I hear about the 10,000 hours or 80,000 hours before they hit 20 or 25, whatever the case is. And usually that puts them in the top 20 tier, etc. But what kind of... Uh, You've been watching this, you're, you're, you're close and, and you're in this industry. Um, I wonder, are the cyclists, can they flow well with football? Or, are they, or is their body conditioned in a way that football won't work for them? Because cycling has really exploded in the UAE. I mean, we, pretty much everyone I, I know has cycled for at least two or three years, completely had an evolution of change in mentality and, and physical side. But from your perspective, do you see cyclists actually alternating between football and all that, or it's not something that works? No, definitely. At the end of the day, I mean, of course, uh, one good thing that you could be saying about the people actually turning into cyclism you know, here is that, uh, of course, they're going to be healthy and they're going to be fit in that sense. So, of course, this is going to Stronger help. Stronger legs. That, that's the thing. No? So, yeah. at the end of the day, what you were saying no? also before about um, this uh, moment in which what the parents should look at when they are uh, having their kids maybe playing football or not, the important part is that they find it entertaining. Uh, the very first part of, uh, of the development, actually, of a football player should be that he find this entertaining. Mm. Not just looking at becoming professional or not. Uh, the kids should like playing football and they shouldn't be forced to play football. Mm. So as they progress and they get better actually being entertained, then you can implement some other elements in their more competitive side, more tactical side, more technical side. But the very first thing is for them to enjoy playing football after you know, if they keep enjoying playing football and you can be slowly introducing those other elements, and of course a very important one, this is one that maybe many people neglect many times, so it's a mental one. Mental part is probably 50% of actually becoming professional in terms of football. So, I mean, I never became a professional football player myself, but mm -hmm. uh, I know for a fact that this is actually something that is very important. It's part of the methodology that we have, that is on the pitch, is off the pitch. You touch on a strong point when you say the mental part. Um, when I first sat with Khabib and Sidor, I was wondering why, you, you, how can you do both sports? But it, the MMA side was just the mental part, on, on what what Khabib applied, etc. So, and and the combination of that, Sidor believes, will create some good products. Um, uh, and as I mentioned, I wish them all the best with that. But uh, coming back to La Liga, um, these are obvious questions. I mean, but what's the best way to follow the news on that, whether it's about development and other activities, not just the competitions, etc. But today, what are the best sources? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming there are apps. I'm assuming it's online, etc. But I need a refresher. Of course. I mean, we're strong in social media. Obviously, we are the sports property with highest follower base in social media in the world. We have over 140 million uh, followers mm -hmm. across the different platforms. So, of course, you can find uh, in Facebook, you can have in Instagram, you can have in, in Twitter. That interestingly enough, our Arabic account in Twitter is the most followed <laughs> in the world, even more than the English one. Uh, I, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> So this is in, is interesting because it actually can tell you a little bit about how wide and how big our our follower base is in here, and uh, yeah, we're aiming actually to be a little bit even more strengthening our our cooperation actually with the MCC in order to be closer also to the community. I think that we have done some things in the past, but I think that now that. Uh, this touch wood uh, with the COVID situation and the pandemic, we're going to be able to do some more things. Uh, I think that uh, it's going to be an exciting time for being in here. We're going to be doing a lot of things, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to find the ways of everyone to know about it. I'm actually more excited now to watch uh, in, in a strange way. I look at things, and sometimes I look at them invertedly. Um, you'd expect people to be less prone since uh, Ronaldo left and Messi left to other leagues, French and the English Premiership. But I'm more excited to see who the new faces are. And... Uh, and, you know, funny things do happen in, in, in the Spanish league. Um, Madrid, with all of its strength, used to, would have, uh, I don't know how to say it, a flip of a coin who would win when it was Madrid and Barcelona. But when Aguero was at Atletico Madrid, somehow him, he and the others had their number. They would win just as, as, as probable, let's put it that way. And I like that. Um, do we expect to see some of this a little bit? 
and this is part of the work that we do. No? Our aim is that the league is uh, as attractive as possible for the people. So, of course, this is something that we work on in order to make all of the teams stronger. And this is something that since uh, we started this process, actually, in which it started in 2015, with the, uh, with the agreement actually for selling the TV rights as a whole. Mm -hmm. this, is, this was very important because it was actually empowering the smaller teams. So they were getting more revenue and that was actually allowing them to invest more in their infrastructure, mm -hmm. investing more in their staff, in their teams, in the professionalization of the club itself. So it's a process and uh, we realized that we don't have to, it's very important for us to not just depend on a single player because the competition itself is higher than that. So this is also something that we have been working on mm. in a very, very important way, you know, to be having a league that is recognizable by itself. And there will be players that come and go, but at the end of the day, there's an essence in there that is recognizable. And of course, that more clubs are competing in there. This is the, this is the aim. So for sure, you are going to be seeing, and I think that this season is a great example of it in terms of the competition. Now the first... Uh, seven clubs in the table are uh, less than six points away. So this is something that is unprecedented at this point. Yeah, usually it's just two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember uh, in Sevilla, not uh, Canuti, I think. It's not Canuti, it's the other player. There's another one. And I would ask questions about, you know, wh why wouldn't he jump to a bigger team, etc. And that player, specific player, had shareholders to his right. And if he goes to a strong team, he scores less goals, makes money less for them. And that story was just driving me crazy. And I wasn't a big fan of any of the teams. Like I, because there's a lot of uh, factors. And it's not just in Spanish League, it's, it's in other places. But how much of that is impacting today's game? And how does the fans and ownership deal with situations like these? I mean, uh, I you're think familiar with what I'm explaining, yeah? Yeah, yeah but I, I think that there's a, a common thing in there that should always remain, that is the, is the passion side of it. Yes. Of course, uh, this is an industry that has been becoming more and more and more professional. So this is something that, of course, it moves uh, a lot of money worldwide. No? But uh, at the end of the day, I think that it's very, very important to keep the basics in there, to keep why actually people have been playing football for over 100 years. That is the fact that it's something that, brings people together. There are examples, great examples of that actually that no matter who you are, when you are on the pitch, everyone is actually the same and they are trying to, mm -hmm. you know, achieve the same goal. So it's about, it's about bringing the sport to its values. You no, know? it's about uh, all this teamwork, it's the respect, it's the respect for the, mm -hmm. for the opponent. All of these things need to remain in there, even though I think that now more important than ever, it's very important to keep all those values in mind because of the increase of the, of the business side of it. And this is a part that we, of course, need to understand. And uh, it makes sense because uh, the follower base of football in general is astonishing across the whole world. It's the, it's, it's the king of all the sports, you know, it's always said. So, of course, this brings that uh, business side of it to take an importance. But I think that more important than ever is to keep that other side in there in place as well and respect that.